I used to be pretty adamant that the Thermarest wing lock inflation valve on their sleeping pads like the X-Lite and X-Therm was terrible, only marginally better than the garbage valve they used to use. But a few years later, I am here to admit that I was wrong. It's not often that I'm wrong, but occasionally I come around on pieces of gear and features that I used to hate. I had two main issues with the wing lock valve. The first one was that the bag that came with the X-Lite and X-Therm sleeping pads just didn't attach to the wing lock valve very well, so it was constantly popping off and it was really difficult to use, especially in confined spaces like small tents. The second issue is that Thermarest advertised that the wing lock valve would deflate the pads faster by letting out more air, but based on my testing, that wasn't the case. I found it to deflate just as fast as before, even though they advertised two times faster. And while the valve still sucks, I basically never use it. And I find myself using the Tiny Pump X inflation pump a lot more. It fits really well onto the wing lock valve, gets a really tight seal and inflates the pad really quickly. And as a bonus, the pump doubles as a lantern so you can hang it up in your tent or put it on a picnic table at night. Both the X-Lite and the X-Therm use triangular core matrix insulation inside the pads in order to reduce convective heat loss by preventing cold air from moving around the pad. And while that's a super effective form of insulation, it also makes it so that the pad deflates a little bit slower. And I'm gonna make that trade off every day of the week because these pads are one of the best out there for warmth to weight ratios. The wing lock valve also has four benefits that I didn't really realize when I was first testing it out. First of all, it's super durable. This thing is bomb proof. They've tested it out in some really extreme conditions and I've put it through its paces as well. And if it does break, then it's really easy to repair, which is awesome because sometimes when a valve breaks, that means that that pad is going to the dumpster. The third benefit is that it's really easy to use the wing lock valve with gloves. I use the X-Therm in some really cold temperatures. I don't wanna to have to be taking my gloves off in order to open up a valve. And with some sleeping pads out there, the little tabs and stuff that they have on there are really hard to use with gloves on. I'm gonna blame this next thing on the gear review echo chamber that I got sucked into when I first started reviewing gear. When people were reviewing quilts, a lot of people would say that if the neck cinch on the quilt was in the middle at the top, then it would kind of flop around your face, be really uncomfortable, or maybe get tangled up in your arms as you toss and turn. But after a bunch of testing and now many years of using quilts, that isn't the case. And I find that having it at the top is no problem. Most of the time I have my hands inside the quilt already when I'm cinching it up. So I pulled the cinch inside the quilt and then I cinch it up and it's just kind of tucked away inside with me. And as I toss and turn, I find that it's not getting tangled up or anything. I'm now much more aware of bias as I'm doing my reviews and go into every product with an open mind so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. For years, I wrote off backcountry bidets as tools for people with perfectly formed poops or minimal butt cheeks because otherwise you're just gonna be dealing with a mess. But I revisited the backcountry bidet after the Great Divide Trail where I really prioritized keeping things clean down there because otherwise it was starting to get stinky or chafy. So I was washing down there anyways, and I thought to myself, if I'm gonna be washing down there, why not just use a bidet right after and skip the middleman? I experimented thoroughly with the Kulo Clean and found a system that 100% works for me every single time, doesn't use any toilet paper, and gets things really clean with minimal amount of time. The method involves introducing water to the top of your butt crack by pouring water using a water bottle or using the Kulo Clean to direct it to the right spot. If you have kind of a big mess down there, then using the Kulo Clean just helps get rid of it a little bit more effectively. I then take my left hand and I lather it up with some soap, reach under there and give it a good scrub. Then I dry off with a Kula cloth and I have the cleanest butt on trail. I've been told that this method is gross because you are using your hand, but you're also using soap. So I don't look at it as being any different than having a shower or taking a bath and then drying off with a towel. One of the most popular ultralight tent manufacturers, z -Packs, constantly gets hit with complaints about their rainbow doors that fall to the ground. This was something that I kind of just echoed as well because other people were complaining about it and I thought, you know what, maybe it's an issue for some people out there. But for me, I've gone from thinking of them as a potential nuisance to a feature that I actually like with z -Packs tents like this Plex Solo. To show you what I'm talking about in more detail, as you fully unzip z -Pack tent doors, they fall to the ground. This gives you a huge opening and allows you to access the tent from either side of the trekking pole, but people get worried about the door getting dirty or wrecked. I've used Z-Pax tents for close to 100 nights now and don't find it to be an issue to keep it from landing in the dirt and getting dirty and wrecked. You just have to make sure that the door lands inside the tent, which is pretty easy to do. Overall, I don't think the rainbow door is a big issue. If anything, it's kind of just a neutral point. For some people, it's gonna be a benefit. For other people, I probably wouldn't worry too much about it. If you wanna see some gear that I've been right about for years, go check out this video right up here. It's gear that I have tons of miles, tons of nights on, and is what I reach for when I need gear that I know is gonna perform and then do well on trail.